G'day guys, my name's Nick. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to change the coolant on your four-wheel drive. Alrighty guys, so to change the coolant today, we're gonna to need a couple of tools and bits and pieces. So what I have here is a funnel, I have a drain pan, I've got a measuring jug, some coolant, some demineralized water, I've got a half inch ratchet with a 14 and a 17 millimeter socket, I've got a couple of rags, a few gloves, and under here I've got a little bit of cardboard which I like to chuck under the car to catch any spills or drips. So you'll also need a few extra tools to carry out the job properly. So you'll need a flat blade screwdriver, 10 millimeter socket, and a quarter drive ratchet. So it's very important that we carry out this job when the engine is cold. So the reason being is when the engine heats up to operating temperature, the cooling system actually builds up a lot of pressure, which can be released when we take off the cap. And that can cover us in boiling hot coolant, which we do not want. So another little safety thing I like to do whenever working on the cooling system, whenever I take the radiator cap off, I cover it with a rag. So if you're coming in here just like this and popping that cap off really quick, you have that potential of the pressure releasing very quick and potentially spraying you with boiling hot coolant. So what I usually do is just get a rag like this. I'll cover the whole thing here and then turn the cap, hold my finger on it to hold it down, gently turn it and then gently wiggle it up. And if there is any pressure, you'll definitely feel the coolant coming out of there. Um, but like I said, my vehicle is cold today, so I've released it and not much coolant at all has come out, just sort of what was sitting in the cap. Now we can come over to the coolant overflow bottle or the reservoir and pop the cap off. So this will just help all of the coolant rush out when we loosen the drain bung. So I'll just chuck my bit of cardboard under. And now we can take off this under tray so we can gain access to the drain. So what we've got here is our radiator drain. So you can see the little bung here and the drain hole. So we're just gonna get our tray under here, loosen off this bung and allow all of that coolant to drip out of the radiator. So most modern vehicles do have a drain bung like this or they'll have a little plastic um, bung in the bottom of the radiator which you remove. So if you do have an older vehicle without this little drain bung, you can just remove the bottom hose. All right, so I'll chuck my drain pan under here and now I can just loosen off this um, little drain bung in the bottom of the radiator and we'll just try and catch all of that coolant um, so we can measure it later. So now we'll just leave the vehicle for around half an hour or so and let all of that old coolant drip out of the cooling system. So the MUX holds about nine and a half litres in the cooling system. So just make sure when you select the drain pan that it can hold at least 10 litres. So while that coolant drains, how often should you change your coolant? So according to the Isuzu service manual, factory filled coolant must be replaced at 75,000 kilometres or 60 months, whichever occurs first. It also states in here that the coolant concentration should be inspected every service. So this can be done with a little stick that we drop into the coolant and it measures the concentration of coolant in that cooling system. So you can see over there we've got maybe 7.5 litres in there. So the system does take nine and a half litres. So we have a little bit of coolant stuck in the reservoir still, which we need to drain out. So what you might be able to see in here guys is in the overflow bottle, there is still a fair bit of coolant left in there. So to get this out, you can either suck it out with a suction pump or you can remove the bottle and drain it out. So I haven't got a suction pump, so I'm gonna remove this overflow bottle today and just drain it all out into my drain pan. So to remove the overflow bottle, we're gonna to have to take these two 10 millimeter bolts off we're going to have to unclip this little hose and take it off the spout here as well. So you can see now I've drained out that reservoir that I have pretty much nine and a half litres in my drain pan, which is perfect. So that means I've got all of that old coolant out of the system and now we can replace it with fresh coolant. So before we fill the coolant back up, I've just got to fit my overflow bottle back to the vehicle. So I'll just put it in there. We'll just route our little hose here and just pop that back on. Now we'll just put our two 10 mil bolts back in and make sure that the um, bottom little mount on the overflow bottle is sitting in the radiator support. We can tighten these up. And then we'll be ready to fill the cooling system.
Alright guys, so it's time to fill the cooling system with fresh coolant. So what I have here is my coolant, demineralized water, and I have a measuring jug. So this is coolant concentrate, so I need to mix the coolant concentrate with a 50-50 ratio with demineralized water. So I'm going to put one litre of demineralized water into my measuring jug and one litre of coolant concentrate, mix it around and then I can put it into my cooling system. So you can get premixed coolant, which is perfectly fine to use, but I just find that the concentrate coolant seems to last a little bit longer. So 8 years and 500,000 kilometres. So I'll pour one litre of concentrate into here, in my measuring jug. And now I've got one litre of demineralized water. So now we've got two litres of coolant made up. So now I'm ready to pour this into my cooling system. So I'm just going to fill the overflow bottle with coolant until it gets to the max line. So I'll just put my funnel in here and I'll just pour my coolant in until it gets to the max line uh, on the overflow bottle. So there you go. So the overflow bottle takes roughly 1.75 litres of coolant. So now we can close the lid on the overflow bottle and now it's time to start filling the radiator. Alrighty, so I'll put the funnel into the top of the radiator there. And I'm just going to pour the rest of that coolant into the radiator that I had left over. Just slowly. And now I'm just going to go make up another batch of coolant and keep topping up the radiator. So I've got another bucket of coolant here that I'm going to put into the system. And now the best thing about measuring all of the coolant that we drained out of the system is we know exactly how much we need to put back in to get it to the correct level. So by pouring the coolant in slowly like this, we ensure that we don't get any air pockets or air bubbles caught down in the system. So by filling it slowly, we allow that air to escape through the radiator, so it has time to get out before we pour the coolant in. All right, so this is the last bottle of coolant. I'm just gonna slowly pour that in. Now you can see that I get to my last bottle of coolant and it starts to overflow the radiator. So I'm gonna have to put this aside for a second and we'll just let that drain down a bit. So you can see here that the radiator is full to the brim, can't get any more coolant into it. So what we're going to do now is start the engine up, turn the heater on full and get that water pump circulating the coolant through the whole system. So this level will hopefully drop down a little bit more and we can get that extra litre into it. So we'll start up the vehicle. So when you start the car you want to set the heater system to full hot, full fan and you want it on the front windscreen with your air conditioning off. So what this will do is open up the heater system and allow that coolant to flow through the whole cooling system and get out any air bubbles. Put my funnel back in. So I've let the vehicle run for about 15 minutes now and the radiator level is staying full and there's no more air bubbles coming out. So that's exactly what we want to see. Now we can pop the radiator cap back onto the vehicle and we can give it a rev and heat it up to operating temp. So I'm just going to keep my revs up to about two, two and a half grand and I'm just going to watch this coolant temperature and make sure that it gets up to halfway so it uh, reaches operating temperature and then we can put it all back together, clean it down and take it for a good drive. So now we've got the vehicle up to operating temperature, I'm just going to do a quick check around before we put it back together. Make sure that our level in the overflow bottle is still on full. Make sure our cap is tight and it's not leaking. And we'll just make sure that underneath here our drain bung is tight and dry as well. Alright, so I'm just going to chuck my under tray back on. So I'll just give the engine bay a quick clean down. Just clean all that coolant off. I'm trying not to concentrate it too much onto the actual engine because it is warm. Um, but I'll just get rid of all that coolant and uh, on the under trays as well. So now it's time to go for a decent half an hour drive to let all of that coolant circulate through the system. So you can change your climate control back to cool now, and now we can go for a drive. Let's go. Okay guys, so now we've been for a decent 30 minute drive. We've got the vehicle up to operating temperature. And we've allowed that new coolant to circulate the system. 
Now what we need to do is allow the vehicle to sit for up to four hours, if not more, and let it cool down completely. So what we can do then is we can recheck the coolant level safely in the radiator and in the overflow bottle. So now I've let the vehicle sit for around four hours, I'm just going to do a quick check over of the cooling system. So just make sure there's no leaks and make sure that my level is looking okay. So the drain bung on the bottom of the radiator looks nice and dry, so that's perfect. And I also haven't got any leaks around the overflow bottle and the level in the overflow bottle looks good. So you can see the level down there. So there's a little max mark just here and it's sitting perfectly on the max mark. Okay guys, so it's time to do our final coolant check. So we've let the vehicle cool down and now we can check the level of coolant in our radiator. So I'm just gonna put my rag over the radiator cap again. I'll just slowly loosen that off, apply some pressure down and then just gently remove this radiator cap and we can check the level. Try not to drip too much coolant. So now I've just filled the radiator up with a little bit more coolant, so it's right up to the brim now. So now I know that my cooling system is full to the brim with coolant and the level is correct. So now I can put my cap back on without spilling too much. So I'll try and just put this around here and catch as much as I can. I'll just pop this cap back in. And I might just have to give it just a little bit of a spray down a little bit of a wipe down just to get rid of any excess coolant and then we're all good. So now the coolant change on the MUX is all finished. I'm going to drop down in the description and in the comments below a link to a couple of tools and bits and pieces to make the job a heap easier for you. Okay guys, so that's exactly how easy it is to change the coolant on your full drive. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications bell so you get notified when I release new videos and stay tuned for more full driving, accessory fitting and maintenance videos. Cheers guys.